Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this module, we would look at the flows of another South Asian culture, namely Bollywood cinema. Mm, I call it South Asian culture rather than Indian culture, although it is Indian culture, because I would also be referring to the flows of cinema from the Indian subcontinent prior to the uh, division of undivided India into India and Punjab. But before we look at the flows of Bollywood cinema, I would like to make a distinction between Hindi cinema, Indian cinema and Bollywood cinema. Although these terms are used interchangeably now, with uh, some going as far as to say that uh, Slumdog Millionaire is a Bollywood film, it's uh, very important to understand that all of Indian cinema is not Bollywood cinema and we need to understand what exactly we mean by Bollywood cinema. So, we will begin by understanding what we mean by Bollywood cinema even though the term is used synonymously with all of Indian cinema. So, this uh, group of uh, this group of participants do not really need to have a history of Hindi cinema, particularly the participants in India, because not many people would need to know what Hindi cinema is. I am referring to Hindi commercial cinema rather than art house cinema, as we know that uh, Hindi cinema itself has two streams. Um, uh, Indian cinema has has had there are many kinds of Indian cinema. The commercial popular Hindi cinema is one and the other uh, other is art house cinema which was called parallel cinema in the 70s. We are not talking about the flows of art house cinema even though they do occur. We are looking mainly at the flows of the disparaged, disavowed commercial Hindi cinema and of cinema in other languages of India, but mainly the commercial cinema in those languages. Um, Bollywood uh, defining, uh, we, when we define Bollywood, we find it is often used as a term for Indian popular cinema in general, but uh, or it is interchangeably used with Hindi cinema or even Bombay cinema as the film theorist Vijay Mishra calls it. But in our, for our understanding, we will define uh, in, in a, it, if we use it as a, in a more technical, more specific sense, Bollywood is used to, def, to look at the films produced after post-liberalization post films. And the term Bollywood is um, suggests denigration because it, uh, it gestures to the denigration of popular, popular cinema in India, not only by the elite, uh, by the westernized elite, but also by the, by the state and a view which was uh, willy-nilly uh, endorsed by the film industry, which did not is have any pretensions to call itself uh, high or uh, art house cinema. Now, the, the term Bollywood also suggests has this relationship of subordination, secondariness and imitation. The common view of Bollywood as a poor copy of Hollywood shared by many of its critics as well as uh, some commercial filmmakers. What exactly is Bollywood cinema? So, uh, this is uh, there were these uh, debates about Indian cinema in the 60s, uh, and these debates were largely in film journalism rather than academia. 
uh, in the 1990s, uh, we had this debate between Chidanand Das Gupta versus Ashish Nandi. Uh, sorry for misspelling Ashish Nandi's name. It's a single S and has an H at the end. So, A S I S H. And in these debates, popular cinema was framed within a discourse formulated for the analysis of real, realist cinema and found lacking. Now, this was located in a cinema was located in pre-modern tradition and inimical to the drive towards secular modernity and its institutions. And these debates reflect the paternalism of the westernized middle class intelligentsia towards the cinema of, towards the commercial cinema of India. And uh, then we had the beginning of film studies in the 90s. Uh, the emerge, uh, we are not talking about the emergence of film studies as a di discipline, but the interest of in Hindi or Indian cinema in the academia, particularly by South Asian scholars based in metropolitan universities, who took up the cinema as a subject of study and a number of books appeared in the 90s, beginning with Sumita Chakravarti's National Identity in Indian Popular Cinema. 1947 to 1987 and 1995, Ashish Rajidhaksha's path-breaking encyclopedia of Indian cinema, followed by Ma A. A. Madhav Prasad's The Ideology of the Hindi Film and um, some of Ravi Vasudevan's essays, collect, edited book, Making Meaning in Indian Cinema. Now, contributions of the 19th 90s film theory to the understanding of Indian cinema, it implicates, uh, it calls attention to its implication in the ideological construction of the nation of modernity and the citizen subject of Indian modernity. Indian cinema is seen as a transformation and appropriation of the Hollywood model and, um, and the, the, this is used as an interpretive frame, it provides an interpretative frame for examining the aesthetic and cultural difference of Indian cinema. Uh, so, with Geeta Kapoor's idea of frontality in Indian visual arts, Chakravarti's idea of impersonation, Rajadaksha's three looks, Prasad's idea of the darshana and Mishra's uh, uh, focus on desire, Vasudevan's emphasis on modes of address and Srinivasan's fan culture, these have made a major contribution to the understanding of Indian popular cinema and also provided it new respectability. Now, um, similarly, Indian cinema was being studied in the diasporas by a number of scholars, K. Moti, Gokul Singh and Vimal Desanayake in 2002, which Vijay Mishra's influential book, Bombay Cinema. Temples of Desire was followed by an anthology, edited anthology by Ram, Ram, younger scholars Ravinder Kaur and Ajay Sinha called Bolly World and Rajinder, Rajinder Kumar Dutra's Sociology Goes to the Movies, Shakuntala Banerjee's Reading Bollywood which focus on the audience of Bollywood cinema. Now, these new trends in which diasporic desires and in Indian cinema, the old diasporas and the new diasporas and the role, uh, the cinema's role in the construction of other third world modernities uh, and the transformation of Bombay film industry post liberalization are very important for understanding what we mean by Bollywood cinema. Uh, so, we are going to look at ba Bollywood's transnational flows, we are going to look at Bollywood as a culture of globalization, as a global culture, as a third culture and what we would do in, the, in this module is to compare the transnational flows of Bollywood cinema with the global flows and we will look at the impact of global flows on the notion of national culture. We will look at Bollywood as one of the resisting cultures which resist the homogenizing drive of the so called global monoculture and we look at a cinema which appropriates the global 
to reinvent the local. It leads to de territorialization and also global appropriations and produces a new bond brand of cultural nationalism. So, what we find is that we find a significant alteration in the production, address, consumption and affect of Bollywood cinema beginning sometime in the mid 90s and um, uh, uh, so, I will quickly give you an overview of the kind of films that emerge and how uh, to deconstruct the uh, origins or genealogy of the term Bollywood. Bombay or Hindi commercial cinema, it is used interchangeably with Indian cinema, but Indian cinema has multiple ethno linguistic streams. There is Bengali cinema with its based in Kolkata, Marathi in South Indian languages including Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and Kannada, each of which is a major film industry. So, the term Bollywood is supposed to have begin, is believed to have begun with uh, the use of the term Tollywood in the 1932 more than 8, 80 years ago by in a telegram sent uh, by somebody uh, and, and this term uh, which collated Tolliganj, where the cinema of uh, studios were uh, located, uh, to rhyme it with Hollywood, for is first is the first use of the term wood in relation to Indian cinema. Uh, now, in the 70s, this term was used as a derogatory term, in particularly by English language ta tabloids and Amit Khanna and the journalists Bevinda Kolaku take the credit for having invented the term, even though we have seen that was used much earlier. Now, this term displayed the middle class English language film critics bias against popular culture. And they used the criteria designed for art house, art house cinema were in, in evaluating commercial films. So, as a product of uh, as uh, in the 70s, one would not be caught uh, watching a uh, Bollywood film, at least the anglicized elite would not own up to having watched a Bollywood film, even though it was a secret fetish for most of the film goers in the 70s uh, at all times one can say, but there was a kind of guilt about the pleasure, the, the uh, guilt about the pleasure of enjoying a Hindi commercial film in the 70s, particularly among the anglicized elite, not among the masses, but among the anglicized elite. Now, Bollywood is a portmanteau of Bombay, the former name for Mumbai and Hollywood. And Bollywood as we saw um, is seen as often seen as a copy of Hollywood, a poor copy of Hollywood and uh, charges of plagiarism uh, have often been uh, lodged against Bollywood cinema, including this poster that I display, this film which is believed to be a copy of Memento. And uh, while some look at it as a poor copy, others see it as a creative transformation. Now, let us look at a different genealogy of Bollywood uh, based on Ashish Raj Rajadhyaksha's uh, definition in his essay. Bollywoodization of Hindi cinema, where he used the term to denote Hindi films after liberalization in the 1990s. And uh, there were some major changes in the films produced after 1990s, and we are talking about the post globalization era. First of all, there is a change in the address to begin with from the nation to the diaspora and I will go into the reasons why the change occurs in a while. But the other major change is because of this uh, for the same reason, there is also a, an accompanying change in the distribution, marketing and audience of Indian cinema, of Hindi cinema. And finally, the the uh, elevation of the cin of cinema to the status of an un industry, the corporatization of Indian cinema, which did not happen until the turn of the century, are the major changes uh, which are important in in uh, 
differentiating Bollywood cinema from all Indian cinema. Now, Hindi commercial um, culture, commercial cinema refers to the popular culture of India and it is irresistibly its cage, but it is irresistible cage and it is traveled all across the Indian subcontinent, Asia, Middle East, Africa, USR, USSR, Indian diasporas for a long time. But Bollywood after 1995, we find that there is a major change in the address, in the locale, in audience, in the content, con content and in the uses and context of um, Indian cinema. Now, for I use this film, but the change occurred earlier with another film called Hum Aapke Hain Kaun, another iconic film called Hum Aapke Hain Kaun, which occurred, which, uh, which was released earlier than 1995, but just after the liberalization of India, a film which, uh, which barely has a narrative and has been summarized as 14 songs, A Marriage and a Death. But it was this film uh, which, uh, which proved to be such a big hit for, uh, for reasons which seemed unknown then, but in hindsight it looks like that this film which was uh, like, a, uh, which was uh, initially dismissed as an extended wedding video, uh, answered uh, the needs of uh, addressed, was the first response to one of the earliest responses to globalization to the, uh, uh, to the uh, impending globalization of the Indian economy, of Indian society and uh, uh, an aesthetic, aesthetic response to how globalization would impact India. So, this crisis in, in the nation, uh, as, Raj, as Madhav Prasad has said that Indian cinema has always uh, responded has been a reflector and has responded to the form that the state would take in his book, The Ideology of the Hindi Film. Now, we find here that uh, India at the cusp of globalization finds a similar aesthetic response which is, uh, which is encapsulated in this film, Hum Aapke Hain Kaun, which uh, reflects a crisis uh, in, 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 in the Indian polity, in the Indian economy, Indian society in particular about, uh, about the rise of global capitalism and global consumerism and uh, what it would mean for traditional Indian values or the earlier ethic of denial rather than consumption. Now, the film effectively married tradition and modernity and uh, the success of the film lay in, in its effective, it is in its uh, very uh, seamless marrying of modern, modernity and tradition of consumption and renunciation, uh, which seemed to answer the needs of a large number of people in not only in India, but also in the Indian diasporas, because this was the image of India that was being circulated among the diasporas, the image of shining India, but uh, the diasporas have always looked at Hindi films as, uh, as a, a reference point for performing uh, Indian tradition and the film, which, uh, which was a series which consisted of string of rituals r uh, beginning from birth to death, uh, was actually being used as a reference point, as a, a reference text for the performance of those rituals, not only weddings, but all the elaborate rituals that the film uh, very aesthetically depicted. But it was uh, this film in 1995, a film we find a, diff a change in the address in the audience and uh, context of the film of uh, cinema a film called Dil Wale Dulhanya Le Jayenge DDLJ which is still running in Maratha Mandir more than 20 years after its release for a number of reasons. We will not have time to go into those reasons, but this film uh, was different in from all other films in uh, and why did this film happen? I think we need to go into the crisis in the fin Hindi film industry, a crisis brought about through the emergence of 
cassette culture and the video boom of the 80s when cinema going uh, um, particularly among the middle classes diminish as people prefer to watch uh, films in the privacy of their homes or in the comfort of their homes and as a result the ticket prices uh, the, the earnings of the film industry from the ticket prices dropped and this crisis uh, the Hindi film industry uh, met through realizing a, a, a belated re realization that there was a huge market for the Hindi film waiting to be tapped and this huge market for the Hindi film was in the Indian overs diasporas overseas. Even though Indian films had enjoyed huge popularity in the diasporas and the Indian film industry was aware of this, it had not quite capitalized on this trend until it was confronted with the crisis, uh, economic crisis uh, due to the dwindling of uh, film going to the theatres and the uh, rise in piracy and the video boom and the rise in piracy and um, uh, the inability of the state to control uh, piracy. The Hindi film uh, set its sights on the diasporic market and since now the Hindi film was targeting uh, the diasporic market, it had to willingly change its address. And we find a big difference in the address. Now, as uh, the uh, film scholar Vijay Mishra puts it, post-colonial and film scholar Vijay Mishra puts it, this is the first time that the diasporic subject is integrated into the economy of the Hindi film. How is the diasporic subject integrated? How was the diasporic subject imagined in mainstream Hindi cinema? And how did it change after this film? Let us look at some of the earlier films to see how the perception of the diasporic subject changed in the mainstream Hindi film. Let us go back to this iconic uh, film uh, called Pura Barpaschim, uh, with, which, uh, which, uh, which uh, posits India and the diasporas the diasporic Indian and the resident Indian as uh, opposites, polar opposites and the diaspora is the source of all corruption, moral turpitude, lack of integrity, westernization and the loss of traditional Indian values. So, Okay. Now, this is the, uh, it is not that the diaspora or the diasporic settings had not taken place in Hindi films, but this is the way diaspora was depicted and we look at another clip from hey, another iconic film called Hari Rama Hare Krishna and this is how um, it is about, uh, about uh, the separation of, uh, of uh, uh, NRI parents who lived, lived in UK and they separate and it is about uh, how the daughter lives with the father and the mother uh, comes back to India uh, with the son and the daughter trans turns to uh, uh, drugs and to uh, becomes a hippie. So, this is uh, of the anglicized, morally corrupt uh, Indian non resident Hindu. Is, this is the idea of uh, uh, which was symbolized by the uh, diasporic character in the Hindi films, even until the in the in the 70s in films like Purubar Paschim or even in films like uh, Hare Rama Hare Krishna. Now, there is one uh, interesting film uh, and we will begin with some of the early Hindi films. Let us begin with
uh, close bond with. Uh, in, in addition to uh, uh, Singapore, we had a number of films which were number of other films which were set in the uh, in the diasporas. Uh, I'll play quickly some clips from these films for you. So there's an evening in Paris. And we have another uh, song which is set in, um, in Evening in Paris and you can see that okay. Now with this if we come to uh, uh, the 90s. Uh, let's begin with the iconic uh, again the Ye film, uh, the first uh, film we talked about, namely Dilwale Dilaniya Le Jayenge, and we see how the NRI character is represented in this film, and the NRI character becomes the subject of Hindi cinema rather than a lampooned or ridiculed or morally corrupt figure. Uh, because it's the first do. time that the diasporic uh, character is integrated into the economy of the Hindi film and plays a central role. Not only that, the diaspora becomes the custodian of traditional Indian values as opposed to films like Kurabar Pashim, which where it was shown as the antithesis of traditional Indian values. Uh, and this longing in the diaspora to return home is captured very well in this film. Kabhi na kabhi, main zarur apne desh ko, apne Punjab ko. And then finally, uh, we go to uh, this uh, exotic And yet you find that uh, in these films, it's a character from India who becomes, who comes as a savior, the Christ-like figure in Kal Ho Na Ho. So this complex, uh, the, 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 the integration of the diasporic character first in US, UK, then to UK and subsequently to all of the parts of the world shows how the subject of Hindi cinema has now moved from the diaspora to the, uh, uh, from India to the diaspora and there's a corresponding change in the distribution, consumption and uh, even production of Hindi films.